This is Math 151. We're going to look at Section 3.2, which is still finding the derivative, but we're going to find the derivative as a function. And what I mean by that is um, before we were finding the derivative at a certain point, at a certain x value. What we're going to do now is just find it as a function, a general function of, uh, of the whole thing. So it'll be in terms of x. So here's one of our definitions for derivative, as, as we know. And remember that h is the increment that change. We're letting that increment run to zero. This is the point that we're finding the um, derivative at. Uh, and in this case, it'll be general. So it'll be any, any point x. And then what we're doing is we're letting that increment get the zero, um, sliding that secant line down to a tangent line, and then finding the slope of it. Difference in y over the increment, the change in x. Change in y, change in x. Let's do it by our definition. The limit as h approaches 0 of, so notice it says f of um, x plus h. So that would be 3 times, our function is 3 times x squared, but we're entering x plus h into it. Minus f of x is just the function over the interval, the increment. So notice that this, this right here is just the function. 3x squared. Like if you tell me, tell me what x is, this point would be 3x squared. If I go over h, notice my x value is x plus h. This value would be 3 times x plus h squared. So that's what these, this is the differences in y's, difference in h. So let's work this thing out. So 3 times x plus h squared. All right. Uh, hopefully you've got this out of your system by now. h plus h squared is not x squared plus h squared, right? When you square something, you multiply it by itself. So um, you can, if you want, rewrite this like this. Or you can, you can know that this is x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. Might be a good thing to know. Uh, minus 3x squared <clears throat> over h. Let's keep going. Distribute that 3 into there. And notice that uh, 3x squared minus 3x squared is 0. So I'm left with 6xh plus 3h squared over h. Up top, I can factor out an h. h is divide out. Right, because I can't just evaluate that limit uh, right away, because I'd be dividing by 0. So now I have the limit as h approaches 0 of 6x plus 3h. All right, so now I can just plug that h in. So that lets me 6x plus 3 times 0. So just 6x. So that equals 6x. So my function is 3x squared. The derivative of as a function is 6x. What this is telling me is now, like we before, this question could have been like, find the um, derivative when x is 2. And so notice it would be 12. This gives me a formula to find the derivative at every point along this function. Let's peek at a graph at this and see what this what this shows us. So my original function was uh, 3x squared, and then my function of my steepness is 6x. Okay, so let's take a look at these. Um, this is my actual graph, and this is my derivative graph. So here's what this is telling me. Boop. Uh, let me change this a little bit. When x is 1, this goes through the point 1, 3, right? So f of 1 is 3. It evaluates to 3. But when this is 1, the steepness of it is 6. In other words, um, and I can just kind of see this. Notice if I write this 6x minus 3, that's my actual tangent line. It goes through that point, 1, 3 but it has a steepness of 6 at that point. Or I could look at this at, uh, at 1 half. So let's say when x is 1 half, it looks like it has a steepness of 3 
Yeah. So this is telling me the steepness at the x value of 1 half. So what I could do then is I could plug in uh, 3x something ugly. So it looks like it's about 0.8. I'm just estimating, right? But you can see where that tangent line looks like it just touches it. Oh, it does work. It just touches it at that point. So this function tells me the slope of this line at everywhere. So my function g of x is the square root of x, and I want to find g prime of x, the derivative. And I'm finding it as a function, or I'm not finding it for a specific value. So let's go back and grab that original uh, definition. g prime, then, would be the limit as the increment approaches 0 of the function, plus, uh, the function of x plus h. So the function of x plus h minus the actual function, or the function at x, over the increment. All right, this is one of those multiply by the conjugate to get rid of, get rid of those square roots for me. If I multiply this, uh, this times itself just gets rid of the square root, so I have the x plus h. Middle term drops out, negative, positive, and then negative root x times positive root x is minus x over h. And I'm still multiplying by that down in the denominator. Gives me uh, x minus x is 0. You can kind of see a pattern here. <laughs> Stuff drops out. Stuff cancels. So this leaves me the limit is x, uh, sorry, that's an h. Bad, bad. Limit as h approaches 0 of 1 over x plus h uh, plus square root of x. And now I can just plug that h in, leaving me 1 over square root of x plus square root of x, which is 1 over 2 square root of x. And I am uh, I'm done. Got it right there. So in that last problem, I took the derivative of the square root of x. So here's the square root of x. And the answer uh, that I got for the derivatives was 1 over 2 times the square root of x. So let's compare these two graphs. And I'm actually going to change the color of this one because those look like the same color to me. Um, probably not to you. So here's my original function. So if I look, for example, uh, right here, at this point right here, that's the point 4, 2, right? So when I plug in 4, it spits out a 2 as the value. But if I look at the actual steepness of a line that's through that point, it doesn't look very steep, right? Like if I kind of imagine where that tangent line is at, it's like... I don't know, maybe a third or something like that. And notice that, well, it's a fourth. <laughs> notice that this tells me how steep that line is at it. Um, this line, the y value of it, is the steepness of that line. That, that's what that derivative is. Um, so see how here, this line is super steep at zero, and it's almost straight up and down at zero, like it almost is like infinitely steep. That's why this number is so big here. And then as we go along this, it gets less and less steep. It gets less and less steep. So this drops. And this starts to flatten out. So it never has a slope of 0, but it's getting less and less steep, closer and closer to 0. So that's why this derivative line gets lower and lower. Remember, the height of this, the height of the derivative, the y value, the output of the derivative, is the slope of the original function. So some function k of x is x squared minus 3x. We're supposed to find uh, k prime, the derivative of k. f of x plus k. So remember uh, x plus h. So remember when we're doing that, that x plus h is getting plugged into both of these x spots. So we have input squared minus 3 times input minus uh, the actual function. 
And notice we're subtracting the whole function. So I put it in parentheses to make sure that I distribute that negative into there over the increment. Hoo-wee, good times. Uh, x plus h squared. It's not x squared plus h squared. It's x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. Distribute this 3. Distribute that negative all over h. All right, let's clean this up a little bit. x squared minus x squared is 0. Negative 3x plus 3x is 0. Leaving me a bunch of stuff just in terms of h. So I've got uh, 2xh minus 3h plus h squared over h. Still can't just plug it in because I'd be dividing by 0. It'd be 0 over 0, right? Everything would be 0. But notice in the numerator, I can factor out an h. So now I can plug that 0 in for h. This thing goes to 0. So 2x minus 3 is my derivative. So if k of x is x squared minus 3x, k prime of x is 2x minus 3. This tells me the steepness of the tangent line or how quick the instantaneous rate of change of this function at any x value. You give me the x value, I plug it into here. I don't have to redo this thing every time I need to find a value. I've got a general formula for it. So I'm just going to change this k to an f just, uh, just for familiarity, but it can be anything. So we know that if f of x is x squared minus 3x, the derivative of f is 2x minus 3. So this, there's, there's several ways that I can write about derivatives. Um, one of them is this, this prime notation, the derivative of f. Um, if instead of, uh, as a function, I'd written this as y equals x squared minus 3x, I could say y prime. That's another notation I could use. Um, another thing that I could say is I could say, what's the change in y relative to the change in x of this function? Um, again, change in y with respect to change in x, or more likely, what I'd write is the change of this with respect to x is 2x minus 3. There's another notation you might see if you take an engineering class or physics class. Sometimes they'll say the function is the change in y with respect to the change of x. Um, when x is a, or as x approaches a. So, different notations, we'll see them. So what I would like to do now is look at some different functions, just graphs of functions, and try and sketch what their derivatives might look like. So let's take this first function, f of x. We've already done one that, that's kind of like this one. Um, notice that it's pretty steep at first. And again, if you, th you think about like the steepness of these, and what I'm talking about is how steep the line is. What's the slope of the line at each of those points? So we're just going to sketch. So, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll come close. So this is pretty steep at first, but it's getting less and less steep as time goes on. Something like that. How about this one? The steepness never changes. It's always the same slope. And, uh, so I, you know, I have a scale here, but oh, that might be a slope of one. That might be a slope of two. So that's a flat line. The slope is never changing. Here the steepness is changing, right? It's slowing down. So the height is dropping. Remember, this y value is how steep the line is at that point, right? At that same x point. So if I look at that this h of x, it's got a negative steepness, but it's getting less and less negative. And then here, it has a steepness of zero. It's flat at that point. So I know that my slope is zero there. And see how these are all positive slopes getting steeper. And these ones are all negative slopes that are increasing, right? So that's a pretty big negative number. That's 
a smaller negative number that's a smaller negative number as I get to zero. So these turning points right here, these are zeros. This, this is by zeros I mean these are when the slope is zero because it's changing direction. It's, it's going from down to up. So that might help me graph this one. This one is a zero. This one is a zero as well. This is going down, so these are all uh, negative. This is where it starts going up again. I mean, if I'd drawn it better, right? So positive slopes. Now this is like an inflection point. See how it's concave up here and concave down here. So at this, it's still positive, but it's slowing down in its rate. Like the slope here is pretty steep. The slope here is less steep. So here at this inflection point, it's going to start going down again. Here the slope is zero, and these are all negative slopes. Looks like that. We, we've, we've been taking this derivative. You know, we can find f, f prime of x. But I could take the derivative of the derivative. In other words, what's the change rate of change of the rate of change? A notation like that looks something like this second derivative, or we could do the third derivative as well. What's the change of the change of the change? Um, and sometimes this will be written like uh, the change of y and the change of x like that. This would be cute. So we're going to find second derivative of some functions. And I'm going to change that color just because it pleases me to change it. So we have this function, uh, f of x is 4x squared minus 2x plus 1. We want to find the second derivative of it. So we're going to find the derivative, and then we're going to find the derivative of that, the change of the change. So let's find the first one. So um, f of x plus h. So remember, x plus h is getting plugged into that x place, right? That's the input spot. So 4 times input squared minus 2 times input plus 1, that's this part, minus the function just at x. Again, remember to put that in parentheses so that you're subtracting the whole thing over the increment, over that change. Who? We. Man, algebra heaven. x plus h squared, x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. I know there's more. I'm just going to distribute that 4 in right now. So 4x squared, 8x, h, 4h squared. Distribute this negative 2, minus 2x, minus 2h, plus 1. Distribute that negative, negative 4x squared, plus 2x, minus 1. Do you see how that's going to get rid of things that don't have h's in them? That's like just basically getting rid of my remnants of the function and getting like h's with, with things. Uh, and that's all over h. So uh, 4x squared minus 4xx squared is 0. Negative 2x plus 2x is 0. Plus 1 minus 1 is 0. The function's gone, leaving me 8x h minus 2h plus 4h squared over h. Just like before, I can factor out that an h in that numerator. 8x minus 2 plus 4h. Bada bing, bada boom. All right, shove that. Is that 0 in for h? If I can evaluate this now. So that's a 0. So 8x minus 2. So if the function is this, the first derivative is that. That's how fast this thing is changing. Right? That's its rate of change. Now I want to find the rate of change of the rate of change. The second derivative is just going to be the derivative of this. So that's my function now, 8x minus 2. So the limit is at h approaches 0. f of x plus h, I'm plugging in x plus h into this, minus the actual function, 
in parentheses. I'm going to do some distributing. 8x is divide, uh, subtract out negative 2 plus 2 is 2, leaving me 8h over 8. Now I can evaluate, plug that 0 in for h, whoops, over h, sorry. h is divide out, leaving me the limit as h approaches 0 of 8. Well, no matter what h does, 8 is always 8. My second derivative is 8. In other words, this is always changing at a rate of 8, which actually makes sense. Like, if you think about that as a line, what's the slope of that line? 8. <laughs> so its rate of change is always 8. I want to make a little connection here. I'm just going to make a table of x and f of x. All right, so let me think about this change here. Uh, this change is 2. This change is 10. This change, 26, 34. OK, so notice that um, this is x. This is f of x outputs, You know, so certain x values. And here's my change. So from 0 to 1, my change is 2. From 1 to 2, my change is 10. So there's my change. And now how about the change of the change? Whoa, the second derivative is 8. The change of the change is always 8. So we're back to a position function. And in this position function, uh, S of t is distance in meters, how far, maybe how far it is from where it started. And t would be uh, time in seconds. This isn't necessarily something falling. This is just some, some movement in some direction. So we know that S of t is position. The, the change in position, the rate at which the position is, is changing, is the velocity. The derivative of the position is the velocity, which I'll just call v of t. Now the change in velocity or the change in the speed, how fast your speed is changing, that's acceleration. This is how fast it's accelerating. In other words, the second derivative of the position, or the first derivative of the velocity, is how fast or slowly this thing accelerates. So let's find the acceleration at time t of this function. So we need to find the second derivative of this thing. The velocity, first derivative of the position. So we're going to grab this definition limit as that increment heads to zero of the tangent line f of x plus h. So x plus h is my input. In this case, it's going to be a t. Um, so t plus h takes the place of the, the t. So 3 times input squared minus 4 times input plus 1 minus the actual function all over that increment. And again, we get to do a bunch of algebra. Square this and distribute the 3 into it. Distribute that negative 4. Distribute that negative all over h. Let's see what subtracts out. Got to put the plus one in there. Luckily, I was expecting it to cancel out. I'm left with 6t h minus 4h plus h squared over h. In that numerator, I can factor out an h. Gnip gnip. I can plug the zero in for h, so that becomes a 0, so 6t minus 4. So my velocity is 6t minus 4. Now what's nice is, like, if I am kind of have my wits about me, I can see that's a straight line, and the steepness of this is always 6. So I'm, I'm going to make a prediction right now that that's going to be 6. 
But let's go ahead and figure out if it actually is 6. So I'm going to take the second derivative. Uh, the function with x plus h is the input, so min, uh, 6 plus h minus 4. And then minus the actual function itself. That's a t over h. I can distribute that 6 into there. 6t plus 6h minus 4 minus 6t plus 4. Uh, 0, 0. Nice. Uh, limited as h approaches 0 of 6h over h. H's cancel out. Is just 6. Yep, it worked out as 6. Again, change of the change. I'm going to do uh, one more example like this. So s of t is t cubed. Our position is uh, t to the third power. And we're supposed to find the acceleration at time t. So remember, acceleration is second derivative of position. And um, so let's write out what we know. S prime of t. We're using this definition still. Limit as h approaches 0 of x plus h input into the function. So x plus h cubed minus the actual function. And it's not an x, it's a t. I'm doing that so you so you always catch that over h. Okie doke. Uh, I gotta cube this thing t plus h cubed, and as you know, uh, t plus h cubed does not equal t cubed plus h cubed. So it it equals this thing times itself three times. So one thing that you can do is you can you know multiply this out and then distribute the third one in. Um, the other thing is you might just know you might just know that relationship. Oops, that's a three. There's our general relationship for cubing. Um, so that might be something to memorize if you have to cube stuff. Instead of doing it by hand over and over again. But either way, here we go. So t plus h cubed is t cubed plus 3t squared h minus t cubed all over h. Uh, t cubed minus t cubed is 0. Uh, I can factor out that h or just do like that. My canceling of my h's from right there, leaving me 3t squared plus 3th plus h squared. And now I can plug the, the h in 0. That makes this term a 0, this term a 0. So 3t squared. So my velocity is 3t squared. Uh, but to find the acceleration, I need to find the derivative of the velocity, right? Or the second derivative of the position. So limit as h approaches 0. 3 times input squared. And my input is t plus h minus the function at t over the increment. Uh, t plus h squared, t squared plus 2th plus h squared. Distribute that 3 into there. Still minus 3t squared. There's a 0. I can cancel out some h's. And so now I can let h run to 0. This term becomes a 0. It's 6t. So the acceleration is 6 times the time. This thing is constantly accelerating um, 6 times the time. So you would, you would constantly feel that, that push back from the acceleration if you were, if you were in this vehicle, uh, or whatever it is, if you're on this point, or, or whatever it is that's moving. Again, acceleration, second derivative of position, because of the change in position is velocity. The change in velocity is acceleration. And there's actually, like if we go the, the change in acceleration, that's technically called the jerk, <laughs> um, which is the change of the change 
the change of the change of the change. I'm not going to formalize this definitional, but I'm going to say um, there are only certain times when we can find the, um, the derivative. So a function is only uh, differentiable when it's continuous and smooth. So, for example, like this is a, this would be the absolute value function. I could differentiate this part. I could differentiate this part, but not here. Um, I don't I don't have a function for how steep that is there because the limit there doesn't exist. Or even here, I could differentiate up to here and after there, but but not there. Um, and even if there's a hole, it's not continuous there. It actually doesn't have um, a derivative there because there's no there there. You know, so anything. Mm -mm. Nope. Uh, don't go there. No, you get the idea. All right, give those uh, assignments a try, the practice problems. Post any questions that you have in the forums or message me.